This is just a really great methodology to help you structure your component library that actually works. Atomic Design is uh, a framework for understanding and organizing the building blocks of your application. And so uh, it's really a way to think about um, uh, the uh, different levels of uh, components that you're going to have. Uh, and, and Brad Frost does an amazing, amazing job. He, he, he created the, the framework uh, and the concepts. Uh, highly recommend checking out uh, his stuff. You don't have to call things what he calls them. Um, uh, but the concepts are the most important thing. So having uh, a, a cascade of, of things and starting with the smallest um, uh, element, as it were, th things that can't be uh, broken down any further and building up from there will allow you to have the versatility that you need to be able to, to have components um, that can function in different places, um, that uh, can, be, can be broken down so that you can reuse all kinds of levels uh, of, of items in your, your component library and in various places. It just creates so much consistency um, and people really pick up on that. And it's a way that you can provide consistency, which is one of the measures of a good experience, um, it, just systematically and fundamentally in the way that, that you do your work. Um, and so from a design standpoint, it's a way of thinking um, about how you actually design uh, an, an experience and it's a way that actually uh, benefits everybody involved. Uh, it benefits the designer, the developer, uh, it, it benefits the business, and it benefits the customer. In Atomic Design, Brad Frost came up with this really easy and logical methodology using the natural world structure. So there are five different stages of atomic design that all exist at the same time. That includes atoms, molecules, organisms, templates, and pages. So atoms in the natural world are the building blocks of all matter. So atoms bond together to create molecules like carbon dioxide. So it's one carbon atom bonded with two oxygen atoms to create the carbon dioxide molecule, CO2. So then multiple molecules combine together to create more complex organisms like humans or animals. So this natural hierarchy translates very easily to how you would structure your component library within your design system. So atoms are the building blocks and this translates in your component library to your HTML tags like buttons or form fields. So these are individual pieces that cannot be broken down. And then molecules are multiple atoms combined together to create the smallest fundamental unit. So think of a search form that has a form field atom and a button atom combined together to create this molecule. It's not complex, but it can be broken down into multiple atoms. And then organisms are multiple molecules combined together to create a more complex section of your interface. So think of um, a header or a footer. So a header could have a navigation molecule or a search molecule all combined together to create this more complex organism. So a component library typically focuses on the atoms, molecules, and organisms, but in atomic design it also includes templates and pages which helps you to really fill out the full design system and understand how those components work all together in the end. Templates are multiple organisms combined together to create pages and pages are a specific instance of that template so think of a contact page or a home page um, and typically pages include real content so you can get a more accurate depiction of what the user actually sees so atoms molecules, organisms, templates, and pages are the five stages of atomic design. So this is just a really great methodology to help you structure your component library that actually works. <laughs>